This is video number two for homework number five, sections 9-1 and 9-2 of Math 94. Uh, these problems that we're going to discuss on this video are like problems number 1, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16 on the homework. Remember, one of the things that we try to work on in an algebra class is how to solve equations. You are very good at solving equations like this. 3x plus 5 equals 7. These are called linear equations, and the reason they're called linear is this 3x plus 5 represents a line. In this chapter, we're going to talk a lot about solving quadratic equations. And remember, quadratic equations can be written in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. And you did a little work in chapter 8 about how to solve quadratic equations using factoring and the zero product property. In this video, we're going to talk about a different way to solve certain quadratic equations. And we're going to solve them using something called the square root property. Basically, if you can isolate the x squared term, you can use this property. Take a look at this example. Solve x squared equals 144. Now, with all questions that are so asking to use the word solve, this is asking a question. And the question is, what number times itself equals 144? Now, you might know the answer because you know your perfect squares. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the square root of both sides. Now, certainly, the square root of 144 is 12. What's the square root of x squared? Well, that depends. If x is a positive number, then the square root of x squared is x. If x is a negative number, like negative 12 times negative 12, then the square root of negative 12 times negative 12 is positive 12. And that means that we would have it minus x. To compensate for that, when you take the square root of both sides, you want to put this plus or minus here. That's a quick way in mathematics to indicate that the answer is x equals 12 or x equals negative 12. Now, what about this one? Let's see if we can do this. So what would our first step be? Take the square root of each side. And so I don't forget. I'm going to put that plus or minus right here. Now, this is x, and the square root of 81 is what? 9. So, not too bad. Sometimes you end up with a number that is not a perfect square. See if you can solve this problem by yourself. You might want to stop the video now, and then restart when you have completed. Okay, let's take the square root of both sides, not forgetting our plus or minus. So we have y equals plus or minus the square root of 24. Now that is a perfectly fine answer, but as we learned from last chat, last video, this is not simplified. You can simplify the square root of 24 by saying it's 4 times 6, then using that property of square roots that when we have a multiplication we can divide it up and the square root of 4 is 2 so your answer is y equals plus or minus 2 times the square root of 6 okay let's go to a slightly harder problem this problem is a little bit different than the previous one in that this is not just y or x squared it's y minus 3 quantity squared but we'll solve it the same way. I'll take the square root of both sides. This is y minus 3. Notice the square root and the square are opposite operations, so they undo each other. And what is the square root of 25? It's 5. Now remember, this means y minus, five equal, y minus 3 equals 5, or y minus 5 equals, y minus 3, excuse me, y minus 3 equals negative 5. Now to solve each of these, 
just solve them separately. Here I would add 3 to each side, and here I would add 3 to each side. And my solution is 8 or negative 2. See if you can solve this one by yourself. You might want to stop the video and then continue when you are finished. All right, I'm going to take the square root of each side. This is y minus 1. This is the square root of 18. Now, notice the square root of 18, I chose a number which was not a perfect square. Now, that's all right. We can deal with that. And I could write this by adding 1 to each side as just 1 plus or minus the square root of 18. I'm perfectly happy with that answer. But you could simplify the square root of 18 by saying the square root of 18 is 9 times 2. And the square root of 9 times the square root of 2. So this ends up being 1 plus or minus 3 times the square root of 2. Now I want you to realize there are two numbers here. 1 minus 3 times the square root of 2 and 1 plus 3 times the square root of 2. And those are legitimate numbers. They're just a little uglier than the ones that you're used to. Let's get a little harder and work with something like this. This is a quadratic equation. You'll notice there's only a squared term and a constant. If that's what you have, what you can do is you can isolate x squared. So I can move 12 to the other side. Divide both sides by 3 and get x squared equals 4. If I take the square root of both sides, don't forget your plus or minus. x equals plus or minus 2. So my answers are 2 and negative 2. See if you can solve this one by yourself. Stop the video now, and then return to it when you are completed. OK, to solve this one, I'm going to add 18 to each side. Divide both sides by 9. That gives you x squared equals 2. Again, 2 is not a perfect square, but don't worry. Take the square root of both sides. Again, don't forget your plus or minus. So x equals plus or minus the square root of 2. x equals the square root of 2, and x equals minus the square root of 2. Now, be careful in a problem if in your problem it says you want an exact answer, these answers are exact. If I want an approximate answer, I can take my calculator out and I could say square root of 2. And my approximate answer is 1.414213562. Now, you would probably be asked to round this to an appropriate number of digits. So you would probably want to do that. Remember, square root of 2 and minus the square root of 2 are irrational numbers. So just be careful for that when look for the instructions on your homework. Let's do the hardest type of problem, and that would be one like this. Now, as you're going to see later, there are many ways to solve this problem. But for right now, let's try and factor x squared But minus 14x plus 49. So I'm going to use this little box thing we've talked about last chapter. And you'll notice this is 49x squared. And what are the factors of 49x squared that add up to negative 14? That's negative 7 and negative 7. So now I ask, what can I factor out of this box, this row right here? I can factor out an x. Then x times what is x squared? That's x. x times what is negative 7x? That's negative 7. And x times what is negative 7x? That's negative 7. So this factors into x minus 7 times x minus 7 equals 64. Now, 
You were lucky in this problem. This happens to be what we call a perfect square trinomial. And now this problem is reduced down to the form of the ones we just did. So take the square root of both sides. Don't forget your plus or minus. I almost did there. And the square root of 64 is 8. So this says x minus 7 equals 8. Or x minus 7 equals minus 8. So that gives you x equals 15. Or x equals minus 1. And those are your solutions for that problem. Now, let's try this one. Why don't you try this one? This will factor as a perfect square trinomial. Um, try this, then resume the video when you've completed. If you factor this, this turns out to be x and x and 4 and 4 and minus and minus. So that reduces down to x minus 4 quantity squared equals 49. This is of the form where I can use that perfect square or that square root property. So I can take the square root of both sides. Don't forget your plus or minus. 49 is 7. x minus 4 squared. Square root of x minus 4 squared is x minus 4. So I like to write out x minus 4 equals 7. Or x minus 4 equals negative 7. So x equals 11 or x equals minus 3. I hope you found this video useful.